So we definitely don't talk about Will Smith enough. That is sarcasm at its finest because it just is the nightmare that keeps giving. So yesterday there was a video that came out with Jada holding up the camera to Will. It seems like it was on Instagram. I don't know why she thought that was a good idea to post that. I don't, or it was live. I don't understand. Maybe I didn't see what it was, but Jada's holding the camera up to Will and basically saying so-and-so, some person was very helpful to us. Like, let's give this person who was on Red Table Talk and Red Table Talk and Red Table This person who was on, as if Red Table Talk is like, you know, ABC primetime Super Bowl coverage. Like, Red Table Talk. Like, poor Will has to, like, go on and, like, say that they had an open marriage and, like, her, her, her child's friend she was having an affair with on Red Table Talk. Like, at least talk to Oprah. I mean, for the love of God. Okay, so Jada was videoing Will, I guess, on social media and basically was saying this woman was very good to us and let's promote this woman who was on Red Table Talk and didn't this woman help us? And Will looked at her be basically being like, I don't want a camera on me right now and I don't want to be used for clout. And she kind of said like something about, what did she say? She said something about well, like, obviously, whoever helped us in our relationship, not, like, sarcastically, meaning look how, you know, we're a disaster, and it's out there. I don't know how it's out there. Maybe it was, I don't, I don't, I don't, it was on a story, and someone kept it. I genuinely don't know how it's out there, but it's out there that he was looking at her being like, don't use me for content right now. If I take a picture of Paul with, like, the dogs just being a person, being cute in sweatpants, I can't just post that, and I barely would even take a picture of him without asking. I, there's no way, you know, if I, there was a picture of us in, on vacation and we both looked cute. I, I could post that as like, I had a great time or happy birthday, Paul, or I love you, Valentine's day, whatever. But I'm not going to be like, talk. And I know he didn't agree to be public and these are two public figures, but um, you got the sense in the video that Will was feeling used. It was interesting. It just, it, it's so weird that Remember they had those Vine videos or I guess even TikTok videos that were six seconds long? You could sort of tell everything in such a brief period of time. That's that's why reality TV is interesting. They, they, they show you such a small amount of what's filmed, but it kind of crystallizes what went down. Um, so basically Will's saying, like, don't use me for cloud, he said. Wow. And then it made me think about... Um, what it made me think about, honestly, is, is fame and the less famous person. So I'm in a relationship with someone who does not want any attention, meaning he could be on the podcast with me. He could come on red carpets with me. He could be on a show with me. He is so funny and our dynamic together is hilarious. He's not interested in that whatsoever. For the record, I've never been in a relationship with someone who... This is weird. Now think about it. It's 2022. I've never been in a relationship with someone who has a social media presence. Like at all. Like maybe Paul has produced movies, so he has uh, some social media, but it's not used at all whatsoever. Um, so I've never been with someone who is actively on social media ever. And so he's not interested in it. And I've been in relationships where people like people act like they're not interested in it. And I kind of think they're not interested in it. And it's always positioned as they're doing it for me. If it's the, sh if it was the show or something like that. But then I used to come home and the person I was in a relationship with was mic'd up before I got home in scenes that he didn't need to be in. And it really puts you on alert. You feel used. And I know this from all people on housewives and from you know, uh, there was one housewife that I know from another city and we had, we shared an agent at the same time. And the agent somehow said to me, oh, we're doing a call with this person. Or I don't remember what it was or asked me a question uh, about this person's spouse doing a show about their business. And the main person who was famous first was like, ah, uh -uh, well, no, that my spouse doesn't need their own show. Like, the person who is bringing the non-famous person into the fame light really wants to be sort of the driver of it. So, and you get paranoid. And everybody that I know who starts dating someone who's less famous than them, and if, and this is really complicated, but for me, I've been with people who aren't famous at all. 
So that's different. Like that's black and white. And you definitely don't like when that person starts to really like the light and like the shine and want to be on the red carpet. And I think that it's a mistake to do that. I think it's a mistake to be like, we are now famous together. And it happened to me when I did my reality show, um, Bethany Ever After. It was supposed to be about my business, the behind the scenes of my business. And then I got engaged and they're like, well, we'll have to show a little bit of that. And I said, I don't want to be Tori and Dean. And next thing you know, we were Tori and Dean. It's just too tempting because it's funny and it's what's going on. And it was, I am, I regretted it. So the person who's in the spotlight doesn't want the other person to be in the spotlight. And it's not jealousy. It's a lack of trust. It's wondering what the person's motives are. And it's not liking seeing their thirst. And for someone like me who doesn't care about really being photographed or looking good, I'm not superficial. I do it really for business. I go out only if I'm, if it's business, I put makeup on if I'm being, if I'm, if I'm being paid, like I don't just go out because I want to be at everything. If I go to the iHeart Awards, it's because I have a podcast and because my daughter will enjoy it. If I go to uh, the opening of an ice cream museum in New York, it's not because I just want to be like on a red carpet with uh, Katy Perry. It's because my daughter likes will like the museum of ice cream. So I'm very, very, uh, specific about the things that I'll do. If someone invited me, even if it was the vanity fair party, which I'm not invited, I'm saying I would go because I think it would be great business. I'd be great to see people, but I'd wear a sick outfit and it'd be good for coverage. And you just look like you're not always in pajamas. So I'm strategic. So I would not like if somebody else liked the light and the shine and you can just, anybody, everybody knows what that feels like. I remember going to Andy Cohen's Christmas party and people are so famous there. Madonna's been there, Monica Lewinsky, John Mayer, like crazy famous people. And I brought someone and he was like chumming up with everybody and like growing out. And I was like, all right, take it fucking easy now. And then you realize you're not giving them the keys to the kingdom. They're not, you're not giving them the keys to the kingdom until you're fully locked and trustworthy. And even still then. So that was a long non sequitur to say Will's the more famous party in the relationship with Jada. He always has been. And there's no way that that hasn't had its challenges. It's just, there's, it's not even possible. The more famous person is going to just exude something different, overcompensate, try to make the other person feel included, uh, not want to overpower, or it does overpower, then the other person gets resentful. I see that with them. Jada really needed to come out and like, be a power woman and and I am woman hear me roar and there's something going on with that okay there's a power struggle there's something it's subtle so it's interesting with the more famous person how the other person acts and how they come in really strong John uh John John Legend is a more famous person I remember interviewing Chrissy Teigen on my talk show when she had was a model and they met and got married in Italy and she really needed to prove herself. She proved herself in the social media space and then in the cooking space, et cetera. But, you know, he then became sort of overshadowed because he doesn't seem like the person who wants the fame. He doesn't seem like he cares that much. He's already, he's got it. He's invited everywhere. And it's interesting because Chrissy at the Grammys, she looked stunning, by the way. And and I know, I've met her. I know her. She's very, very nice. I mean, she's always been sweet to me. I reached out to her on social media a little bit. And, you know, it's sort of like that kind of relationship. I like her. Um, she She's wearing the big, beautiful gown. He's performing. She's wearing, you know, and effectively Chrissy, who's a star in her own right, obviously she's his plus one, but she's wearing this Gwyneth Paltrow, like gigantic pink gown. So what goes on with them? Like then they're both really famous. They're always both taking pictures and they're, they're an example of people who do it all together. And I guess if both people are on the same page, that works. It's a separate conversation that I think like massive fame with kids and careers and all of that is very difficult to manage. It's just, it is superficial. You can't really focus and connect on the other person. You're worried about your own tan lines and your picture and, you know, a good lighting and, you know, and they travel with social media people. Like they travel with photographers. I ran into them in Italy and saw them and there were like flashing lights and I thought there was paparazzi and there was just like their own crew of like stylists and people because she's a business. I mean, she's got 75 billion followers so like I, you know every outfit she wears in Italy is is a business but it's very hard to connect with your partner when you both have you know oh you're working and it's really more her that's really more her job he's got his main job like he's up on stage at the Grammys he's recording albums and selling them that's his bread and butter for her it's capturing all that so the dynamic and the balance is interesting and then brings me to 
Kim and Pete because <clears throat> she's astronomically more famous than him. And there's no way that she and the family, they love him. They think he's nice. He's growing out with Disick. That's terrific. She's in love. She's having fun. She's dressing more street. She's, you know down to earth and eating pizza and going to drive throughs And, you know, she's in that cool, you know, wearing the letter, letter jacket of your boyfriend phase. And it's amazing. And she's happy and she's at peace and she's, it's the opposite of what she was in before. I'm sure she felt controlled. So that's amazing. There's no way that she doesn't think, okay, I'm definitely raising this guy's stock. I mean, literally, if you invested in Pete Davidson, uh, I'm trying to think because it's the opposite of uh, the opposite of Peloton. Like Peloton went from hero to zero. And Pete Davidson, I know he's on SNL. I know he dated 75 celebrities. But Pete Davidson, his stock just went apple through the roof. Like he, his stock just went through the roof because of Kim. And she knows that. Kim and Kanye together had different types of fame. Together, they probably in an unspoken way, decided, or even spoken, we're, 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 the sum of us is greater than its parts. We're going all the way. By the end of this fucking thing, we're both going to be billionaires. You're going to be on the cover of Vogue 50 times. I'm going to be a fashion icon mogul. And that was like really exponential together. But Kim has definitely, she should have, when she met Pete, she should have just said, fine, we can date. I like you. I think you're hot. I heard you have a big penis and you fit in well because you're on my program, which is what you need to be. You need to be on my program. <laughs> but whatever you make, Chris Jenner's take a 10%. Pull up on, bruh. Whatever, whatever, whatever you make, Pete Davidson. Here's what you have now. Let's see a net worth statement, Pete Davidson, and let's see what deals you already have signed. I'd like to see the deals you've already signed and... I'd like to see a net worth statement at this time. Whatever this, whatever that's worth right now, until we break up or get married, Chris Jenner's taking ten percent. That's what's happening, okay? Because you're gonna fucking go through the roof like Apple. So let's just make that decision now. Speaking of Pete Davidson, last night I saw a video on you know the TikTok, which is the the, the Bible. And the girl he used to go out with, I think her name is Cassie. She's Larry David's daughter, Cassie David or Cassie David. She's Larry David's daughter. And she wrote a book. And by the way it's written and by the way she's self-deprecating and admits her fault, you get the sense that she's telling the truth. She said they were in a relationship. She had this stock before it went public. She had, Larry David's daughter bought the Pete Davidson stock before it went public. OK, so they were together and she said he had emotional issues, uh, you know, uh, mental health issues. And he was very needy. And it sounds like the love bomb type of thing. Like he was just like codependent and it made her uncomfortable. And they broke up. And I guess in a moment of weakness, she wanted to get back together. And he was really upset when they broke up and all this stuff. And six days later, she found out from him when she tried to get back together with him. Uh, she found out, I think, by text. He's happier than he's ever been. And she was on a plane, starts hysterically crying, and she sees that he's in a relationship with Ariana Grande. Now, I'm just going to say something, okay? I'm just going to fucking say something. You can date non-famous people. Like, it is possible. I dated non-famous non people. Like, if your dick falls on a famous vagina every time it goes out, I'm seeing a fucking thread, okay? Like, literally. Because you see how it goes. The guy's dating Larry David's daughter. You're a comedian. You're on SNL. You're effectively, other than that, you know, a nobody. Because those comedians become somebodies. You know what I mean? When, when Andy Samberg was on SNL, he's hysterical. He's successful. Seth Meyers. But they really become somebody later. Mike Myers. Like, they parlay. So you're dating Larry David's daughter. That tracks. It's a comedian and he's a wealthy, you know, he's a successful person in Hollywood, a known person. You're dating his daughter. That tracks. Oh, next up comes Ariana Grande. Uh, and I guess she was in some other relationship right before, or that's a separate story. Like she was kind of dating someone, the guy who died, I think Mac Miller. I may be mixing up the stories, but um, then we, now it's, you know, okay, we're dating Larry David's daughter. We live in LA. Now we're dating Ariana Grande. Uh, okay, that's, okay, wow. That's cool. And we're engaged in 
40 seconds flat, okay? We're engaged in a second. And we're very public about it. If you remember, we're all over. We're taking pictures everywhere. We're emoting publicly. We break up. Next on the agenda is Kate Beckinsale, the girl from Bridgerton. And who else did we have? Was there somebody before Kim Kardashian? Oh, we're from, from Larry David's daughter to a very public relationship and engagement with Ariana Grande, moving right along to Kate Beckinsale. Uh, next on the agenda is Kaya Gerber. And who did I forget? And then we move into Kim Kardashian. Uh, Brigger Bridgerton was in that mix. And Kim Kardashian. I mean, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can explain it to you but I can't understand it for you, okay? Like, if you don't see what I see, do you see what I see? A star fucker moving through that town. I mean, with a dick as big as a clown. I mean, I what do we need? So Kim Kardashian, get the fucking contract, take the 10% of the increase in profits, thank me later. It's re- Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's re big dick you -less. It's re big dick you -less. Okay? It is absolutely fucking re big dick you -less. Wow. I mean, you know, this is what happens. Like, you do one deal, then next time you get a bigger deal because you, you did the first deal. So you've proven yourself in that market. So you got a bit better deal. Oh, the next time, like it, it could be anything. Philanthropy. The first time I did a relief effort, I couldn't get Javianas and Casper to give me a mattress and flip flops. But the second time I raised a million dollars, like the third time, whatever. Now we did $150 million. Like, oh, I went out with da Larry David's daughter. Hmm. Okay. But then, then Ariana Grande and we got engaged and everyone found out I had a big dick. Yippee ki yay. Kate Beckinsale. Like, you can date people that aren't fucking famous. It is a possibility. But why would you if you could go, we're going all the way, headed far forever, and famous, we're gonna stay. I mean, a couple where there's a disparity in who's more famous, one person is largely more famous than the other, something always comes to light. And when the less relevant and less famous person is the peacock, huh, those feathers will push that main motherfucker right out of the way. Those fucking peacock feathers are coming out. Just put me in, coach. Get me in the fucking door, okay? Because as I mentioned, Pete Davidson is still being that peacock. He's, he's, he's... Well, that's not true. I'm seeing a change in Pete Davidson's style. I saw a buzz cut. I'm seeing a little more sleek fashion. Watch. Meghan and Harry is a more famous and less famous couple. I mean, we know that Meghan was on Deal or No Deal and Suits, which is precisely the same as being a member of the royal family. But Harry, I, you know, I, I didn't go to have it, but I'm going to say is more famous. So there's definitely, I don't care what, there's a dynamic in there. There's a dynamic. And you know what? Like, Ellen and Portia do it right. Portia was well-known and an actress. She's not thirsty for fame. That's the perfect combination. She's not thirsty for fame. They're partners. They go in the same way. Ellen respects Portia and wants to build her up. But it's because Portia's not thirsty. She's not, like, climbing into the light. So Megan's way more into the fame than Harry, it seems. Like, she's like, listen... I'm fucking dining out on this shit and I'm going to make a meal out of it, okay? We're leaving the goddamn castle because I want to hang out with George and Amal and Serena and her husband and J-Lo and Ben Affleck. I don't want to be fucking shackled and not be able to take free shit. I want to wear whatever the fuck I want, jewelry, luxe goods. I'm not interested in coming all this way and being in this castle if I cannot enjoy the fucking trappings, okay? So I didn't get it. I didn't see the fine print. But if I can't go and have a bridal shower and give and get some free shit, this might not be for me. Because I didn't go into being a celebrity and being an actress if I wasn't going to be able to work the system and wear my lux goods. And I know that ring is an heirloom, but it's not the size that I would want if I was a member of actual real Hollywood fame. 
So we're going to reset that and you're going to make it up to me in many other Lux good areas. We're going to fly on famous people's planes, live in a major house in Montecito, have a spa and 96 bedrooms, and we're going to fucking do it the right way, bro. Oh, I forgot to mention that Pete Davidson had Northwest on his lap in a pink vehicle in public, out in the universe, in the world. Call me a reactionary, but being in a pink car will draw attention to you regardless, okay? You're either fucking Angeline or Paris Hilton. For anybody who doesn't know who Angeline is, she's this woman who, like, I guess married a Texas rich person, and she was, like, this va-va-voom, bodacious, like, Vegas-looking type blonde platinum Angeline had a pink Corvette and big, 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 big billboards. The only people that I've ever seen that have pink cars are Angeline and Paris Hilton. So Pete and Pete Davidson driving around Northwest on his lap. That's a subtle way to not get noticed. Honestly, if I want to not get noticed, I'm going to have the most famous woman that has ever graced this planet's child on my lap in a pink open vehicle. Please. How fucking dumb do we have to be? Honestly, I was born in a, I was born in the morning. I wasn't born this morning. So I there because the Kardashians on Hulu is coming out. There have been a lot of throwbacks and videos of Kim uh, talking about when she used to organize closets and be an assistant. I used to work as a hostess. Um, I've had every single job. I've been a personal assistant to Paris and Nikki's mom, Kathy. Uh, I've done it all, and so. You know, I, I see these snarky people on TikTok on half the screen when Oprah asked Kim about her sex tape and would she have been successful without her sex tape? Who cares? Like, I, I mean, you know, I, I give them a hard time sometimes, but I'm going to give credit where credit's due. They work their fucking asses off. So to her point about the, the quote, she does, well, she hasn't worked her ass off. Her ass is right on and they're, all their asses are right on. But she... She's proven herself. We don't have to talk about the sex tape any more than we have to talk about me being on The Housewives. Like, we get it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be where I am without The Housewives. It's okay. I also used to work at a fucking bakery in high school. Guess what? I was a hostess at La Scala making $8 an hour and eating free chopped salads every day, driving a Ford Probe. It's okay. That was 10,000 years ago. Kim Kardashian organized closets, worked with Paris, went to the Paris Hilton School of Fame, was better than the teacher you know, went on the red carpets with Nick Lachey, got her fucking self out there, did the sex tape. She, here she is. Here she is. She has the receipts to prove it. Anything you want to know? Forbes isn't lying. She's a billionaire. Sit the fuck down. Who cares if she did a sex tape? I mean, everybody should do a fucking sex tape if you're gonna have a career like that. Honestly, who gives a shit? Who gives a good fuck? It's not like... She's famous for the sex tape. She's 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 hustling her skims on social media. They're at that fucking red carpet in Malibu promoting that show. And if more is more and they want $50 billion, they want it. It's their business. But I, by no means is, is Kim Kardashian now successful because she did a sex tape. Because I could tell you one thing. It all looks easy. Oh, and you all say she's a team of makeup artists and all that. It's true. Plastic surgery, filtering, outfits, wardrobe stylists, all of that. Nannies, mansions, billions. It's true. But I will tell you something. It's exhausting, okay? It's exhausting. Going to one event like that, I'd be dehydrated. You're, 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 feed her, your boobs hurt. I'm not saying she has a billion dollars. Of course you'd get up and do it. That's not my point. But like all that stuff, back to back press, doing press tours, uh, all, does even if you're on a private plane, it's dehydrating. It's exhausting. Your face is peeling off. You're, she's probably breaking out. She probably doesn't have a fucking hair left on her head from those extensions. It's just, it's a lot. So the, the bitch works hard. There's no fucking two ways about it. She's on TikTok posting about her skims and this looks so cute and has a low back and oh my God, you know, and every product and the lip kits and all this shit. I could tell you one thing. She works her fucking ass on. She has worked that ass on. So whatever money she has, and if they want to have $50 billion, which is probably what they want, go with God, because she fucking works her ass off. They all, well, they all do. I mean, they work hard. Okay. We're on a Kardashian kick today. Uh, I saw a clip that 
Chris Jenner was talking to Caitlyn. And, you know, I don't really think about that that often. I mean, Caitlyn is such an iconic person, such a groundbreaking person. And Chris was saying to her, did Bruce ever exist? Because Caitlyn was saying that she eliminated her original birth certificate. So, which you can't, because that's what you were born as. Like, Gaga said, said it best, I was born this way, right. Oh, but she was, Caitlyn was born a woman but 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 that person was born bruce and then changed into caitlin but i guess someone would argue that well right was born bruce jenner no matter what whether bruce jenner as a child felt like uh he was in the wrong body i i don't you know i i don't know i actually don't know that that's an interesting question i would love to have caitlin on but chris is saying but i don't know that's so funny that 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 person now never existed can you eliminate a person can you just say that that person didn't exist because then chris was saying was i ever married and it just made me really think of of chris in part of it to be honest what that experience was like for chris a tv aside what it felt like being with someone who was changing and was felt that they were in the wrong body, was in the wrong body. What if, what the flashbacks were like in Chris's mind about when they were together, sexually, emotionally, etc. I mean, that definitely will take a toll on you. That's an interesting thing. I mean, Chris Jenner's been through a lot. That's a lot. I mean, it's obviously a lot for Caitlyn, but being in a relationship with someone who married you as a man and you had many years together and kids together and loved each other and then them that person then not existing anymore. It's really interesting. And I, yeah, and that's the thing. It's a past life. Kim Kardashian in a, in a past life was in a sex tape. Caitlyn Jenner in a past life was Bruce Jenner. I guess it, a person is gone. I mean, a person is gone and you really can't see any of Bruce Jenner and Caitlyn. It's a new human being. That's very, very interesting. So to, to eliminate a birth certificate does make sense because the person is gone. Oh, there was a new trailer for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It looks really, really entertaining and really good. And I really hope Erica Jane got a raise because there's a lot of discussion about her and her scandal. And she's back in the scandal news again, um, which none of this is, is, is the point of the story. But it's so funny because I was watching Andy Cohen with the Jersey Girls. Um, and it's so it's so funny because they were on watch what happens live with him or one of them i think it was dolores was and he was like wow that was some reunion and she's like i know i'm still not right from it and he's like i know and it just it sounds like we're talking about refugees that left ukraine like people who are victims of a circumstance that they had no control over like and annie was like i know that was really hard and we're just like that was really hard would it be would you be happy if it wasn't hard if, if everybody was like well that was a really lovely lovely experience it was it was a balanced and peaceful and very zen reunion so it felt great and he'd be like that's wonderful i'm really happy that there was no drama like it's such a it's so bullshit like let's just say what it is and it could be like Guys, I'm so happy that you fucked your best friend's sister. I really am. Because you know what? I need that drama. And it's it's literally buying me my house in the Hamptons. So we need that drama. And I appreciate that. I'm so happy that there's lying, st stealing, cheating, bankruptcy, uh, you know, breaking into the White House, flipping tables, and friendships that will never be repaired in the foreseeable future. So thank you for that. But they're just like, yeah, that was really tough. Oh, my God. That was so tough. Like literally as if someone has survived something. So that does make me laugh. Like, yeah, it was a hard, it's been a hard season, you know, really hard season. It's just, it's hysterical. Like it's, it's hysterical. Like, 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 like you're on a, t a, t a team of athletes that where normally things go well and then you have deflate gate. Like that's like a hard season that wasn't expected to be. They really didn't want any drama. But this is just like really funny how they're just like, yeah, mm, that's unfortunate. Or no drama. It's like when you would go on a trip, I just don't want any drama on this trip. Let's just not have any drama. But tomorrow night's really important. It's my charity event for my charity event for a charity and 5% is going to the charity. And I don't want any drama there. It's just like, can we just at least be like, we need fucking drama. We need to burn the house down. Somebody's leg needs to be pulled off. Something needs to happen. Everyone acts like it's, everyone acts like it's like an important family matter. Like, I know 
the funeral was the funeral was hard. We haven't gone through the will yet. It was hard. We 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 did. We sat shiver for a week, and it is really challenging. That's how it's spoken about. The reunions are the season. It was it's it was a hard reunion. It really was. I just it's hard. I'm having a hard time. I know girls who are have been. A, not, not are on antidepressants who have post-traumatic stress disorder like who have depression from it like there's real shit that goes on from that show like girls get medicated to be on it because it gives them so much anxiety when everyone's talking about them or living things out in the press these things aren't really these things wouldn't be happening if you weren't on the show so let's not act like it's some plight just fucking play the game keep going I can't believe you did that at my fake charity event where none of the money goes to charity that you would do that at that event and you would act like that. Um, I've been right. I've been right in the middle. Life is not a cabaret. Okay. I've been right in the middle of it, but I have matured. I have moved on. I do not forget where I came from.